Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome to episode 10 of City Skylines. I think I've got to the point now where I want to try and level the city out in terms of population growth. Obviously we're only at about 20,000 people and the game has a limit of uh, a 1 million uh, citizen population right now. But before I actually start growing any more, I want to make sure that everything in my city is working as well as it could be. If I've got a lot of problems here such as traffic and um, pollution and things if I don't sort them out but just continue to grow it's only going to make matters worse uh, let's just speed things up to make sure we've still got some money coming in now I have been doing a little bit of reading uh, I've managed to uh, read through the manual kindly provided to me by paradox yeah I know who does that right who reads manuals but I have found out some useful information first of all regarding buildings that have been abandoned or burned down if a building burns down like this one has here then it does need to be bulldozed nothing can grow there grow there nothing can be rebuilt there unless it has been bulldozed so let's go ahead and get those if you get any buildings that have been abandoned they do lower the land value so it is best to get rid of them if you can just to stop them being a blight on the landscape however after four weeks or more they will actually um, get somebody else move into them so that's one useful thing another thing that I've learned is regarding landfills and they do work roughly how I thought they did which is basically if a landfill becomes full you can move the stuff to another facility and that basically means that that facility will no longer be collecting now if i try and move something out from a landfill the uh, game will try and send it to an incinerator first if there's no incinerators available it will go to another landfill so theoretically if we've got enough incinerator capacity we can empty all the landfills and then eventually get rid of them bearing in mind of course that even though we do get a little bit more uh, pollution from the incinerators uh, they do have a lot more garbage trucks so they have a much better capacity for handling that so we'll start to get rid of our landfills systematically we will keep our eye on them because they're sort of 50 percent full although we've got lots of um lots of incinerator space left available so we may have to go and start removing them, especially where we've got like several up here all together. Uh, this one, for example, is uh, emptying. Hopefully it's emptying out into this one. Once it's empty, we will go ahead and uh, get rid of that one and start on the next. Uh, so we are still um, using our oil up here. We do get a lot of fires. We have gone and built another fire station up there. Hopefully that will deal with a lot of the problems. Um, do we have, let's have a look at the pollution map. So drinking water pollution, zero, which is always good. Ground pollution is a bit cruddy. There's not an awful lot we can do to reduce that. I mean, of course we could get rid of a lot of the industry, but we will be getting rid of some of the landfills later on, which will certainly help with things. How's the traffic doing over here since I've made this, um, a few adjustments to this roundabout up here there's still traffic lights but the majority of the traffic does seem to be moving of course it's getting stuck in the fact that it's uh you know the traffic sort of catching up with itself around the roundabout which is a little bit difficult i mean i've tried to make it so traffic coming this way can just turn left and, and literally skip the roundabout out if they're just if they just want to turn left it is quite possible that some of this traffic wants to go around the roundabout and go in this direction so i suppose theoretically we could just make a turn off from that side of the road bring it over and we could make all kinds of sort of complicated things with the track with the road to try and cut out some of the congestion but ultimately all we're going to be doing is spending more money on road maintenance and making um making more intersections if we just have a look at the traffic that is probably some of the worst traffic we've got in the uh, in the city. I guess one thing that wouldn't hurt is building another road system over here just so that we've got a bit of a better throughput. Let's go ahead and build a four-lane road with trees because we do want to try and avoid any issue with... Um, let's go for, for curved roads as well. We do want to try and avoid any issues with happiness and land value. This is obviously going to destroy a home or two, but that does give us another connection through the neighbourhood there. And we could also go ahead. What we could do here is get a little bit of commercial because we do have some demand for that. 
Now, do we want to have uh, high density? I think we'll just go for some low density uh, commercial. Need to make sure that we've got water available there, of course. Uh, let's just dezone that block because it's the wrong colour. You should be commercial. Mm, okay, it's not letting me do that. Never mind. That's fine. So we'll just do that, make all of that commercial. Just check that we do have water running through there. No, we don't. Let's just sort of join that up. Did that join up to the existing one? Yeah, I think, I think it did. Um, water availability still isn't great. Of course, we don't need to build anything yet, although we can now build the water treatment plant. So we don't want to pour, pump raw sewage into the water. We can build these water treatment plants to reduce the environmental impact, and it purifies 85% of the pollution in sewage. So... Currently, if we build the water drain pipe, it costs 320 credits per week. This is 640, so it's double the cost to maintain. Not too bothered about the cost to build. I mean, it is significantly more expensive. It's six times more expensive. Um, it has a little bit more noise pollution. I like how the water drain pipe actually says zero pollution when it's just pumping sewage straight into the uh, into the ocean. Um, drain capacity, 120,000 cubic meters. This has 120,000 cubic meters. It does require twice as much electricity. But I guess it's just the fact that it doesn't cause as much sewage. Which is going to be better for us later down the line. Uh, especially as because we'll get to the point where we maybe we want to build down here. And um, having a lot of extra sewage flowing that way isn't going to help matters. Uh, I think what I'm actually going to do in that case is we will we'll pause the game because pausing the game means we'll have less problems. We're going to delete those and we're actually going to build these um, treatment plants. So there's the first one there. We're going to put three in. Yes, they are quite expensive. They should snap to the pipe. If I actually turn the camera around, it'll probably be a little bit easier to see. Uh, should snap to the pipes. One there and the other one there. So they should all be on the pipes. Now, they aren't quite uh, connected to the power at the moment. They should be, uh, but it's a little bit too far out. So let's just connect that up. Now, they should be all connected to the water pipes. Let's go ahead and unpause the game. We might find that the sewage treatment drops momentarily while they just sort themselves out. In fact, it hasn't actually connected them to the pipeline, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, so let's go ahead and... You're not going to let me connect those up now. That's quite annoying. So can we delete any of these underwater pipelines? I don't want to delete the thing, just the water pipeline. There we go. Let's get rid of these existing water pipelines. Is that the entire pipeline? Ah, it's only to that section. That's fine. That works out. Uh, I've also discovered that if you... Will that connect up? No. Um, if you actually destroy uh, something that you've only just built, you get refunded the cost of it, which is quite a nice thing to do. Um, okay, that should be all of those connected up now. There we go. Sewage treatment should go up to full. Now, it's, it's still lacking because we were short on um, our sewage and water problems anyway. So what we're going to do here is go into our budget panel. And under budget, water treatment, we're only at 100%. Let's go and put that up to something like 115. It will cost us a little bit more. Do we want to maybe consider reducing some of these policies down? Because we are spending a lot of money on these policies now. Our, our policy output is quite high. Uh, there is a piece of land available for purchase. I'm not going to bother with that just yet. How is our water situation now? Yeah, there we go. It's still not fantastic, but um, it will do for the time being. Uh, what else do we want to get in here? Let's get rid of the chirper. And um, we can still build trains. Don't see the useful one at the moment. What about our public transport system? Not everywhere is served by bus routes. But there is still fairly decent public transport all the way around the city. Maybe this, um, this area of the city is a little bit abandoned. And we could probably get a bus route or two over here. So uh, let's go ahead and put in a bus stop or two. Um, I was looking at that and think, why can't I put a bus stop there? Because that yellow line is actually the metro, not, uh, not a bus stop. Uh, let's go ahead and put in a bus stop here. Would it allow us to do that? 
And then we'll build a route sort of coming down in this direction. Oh, it's only letting me start it there, is it? Okay, well, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we will handle that. So we're going to add some bus stops to this area here. We'll go down into the area where the houses are. Starting to get the happiness there already. Let's go this way. Down into the houses. Back around this way, I think. And we want to go into the city, of course. So we'll go up to here and then we'll come back down on this side and we'll bring it back down and connect it up. And of course we are going to want to change the colour of that line that we have now learned how to do, make it a little bit different. We'll try and find a bus. There's a lot of traffic using this bridge though. Um, all of the traffic seems to be using one lane, which is a bit of a strange thing. Maybe it's because it all wants to turn left. It's not actually utilising all three of the lanes, which is a, is a little bit silly. As you can see, we've got a massive backup all in a single lane, and that's not helping things at all. Um, can we see a bus anywhere? Maybe if we were actually on the public transport, we'd be able to see the buses a little easier. A lot of people waiting for the bus there. There we go, we have some buses. Let's click on one of these, and we can modify the line colour. And what have we? Let's make this one a sort of a, a, a cyan colour just so it's a little bit easier to see. So there we go. We've got another bus line. Uh, what I would like to do as well is put a metro uh, line in down here somewhere. That seems like a good idea. So let's go ahead and grab the metro tool. And we want to put a station in somewhere. Maybe not directly on the main road. Certainly having one near the industrial area or the commercial area is probably going to be a good idea. Um, where can we fit one in? That's not, not terrible. We'll put one in there. So there we go. Now we need to connect that up using the tunnel. So let's go ahead and connect it up to our existing, um, existing line. Got to be careful because of the... Uh, the slope being too steep there because we're going under the water but we can connect it out over there so let's go ahead and do that as for the other end we have to be very careful here we can connect it up to that side so there we go we've got another tunnel but we need to connect up another line so what we want is this line needs to go down to that station and we don't have a lot of options, really. I think what we might have to do is build another tunnel and maybe run it from this station over here, run it all the way under the city and go back to this station here. So what we can now do is with our line builder, we've got this line here. So we can move this line... There we go, we've got that line there. We move up to this station, and then we can come down here to this station, and then back down to that station. And there we go, we've got another complete line. So, our metro is doing quite a lot of work. We're not getting many tourists. Now, this is something else that I've learned as well, and it is mainly regarding the unique buildings that you can build. Um, these unique buildings basically help you attract tourists but some of the things that are good is when you reach a certain number of landmark buildings um you can build some very very big things like here you can see the fanciest of fancy malls for all the fancy people requirement for building the hadron collider now there are certain things that you get um i can't remember what they they're called now in this game but um they're, they're basically like wonders they're big attractions and some of them give you really nice things i, I know that there is one of them uh, that gives you something like th there's yeah, requirement for building the space elevator. There's there's various different things that give you... Uh, the power one, for example, gives you free unlimited power if you can build it. There's also one that gives you free unlimited health care. But you have to build certain of these buildings in order to do them. Uh, let's have a look at these things. We've got the Fountain of Life and Death. It costs 240 credits a week upkeep. And it's a pretty fi fountain. Reminds passers-by of how fragile life is. And it's the requirement for building the fusion power plant now 
It doesn't cost us an awful lot to maintain. It does, cost, it does cause a little bit of noise pollution. We've also got the transport tower. It's a large office building specially meant for public transport companies. And that's a requirement for building the space elevator. So let's go ahead and let's say we want to build the fusion power plant because that would be absolutely awesome. Uh, I love how we can essentially build this thing um, almost underwater and the roads automatically get elevated. That's quite strange. Uh, let's go and see if we can find a nice place to put it. Remember, it does cause noise pollution, uh, but it would also cause happiness as well. So there is a little bit of a trade-off with it. And it needs to be somewhere that's going to be um, fairly accessible, I suppose. Where would be a good spot? Maybe putting it... Well, oh yeah, the le nowhere really has any access to leisure. Everything is red. There's a little bit of blue because we have that part there. So building it over here somewhere would be ideal. And I guess building it next to this road isn't a bad idea. So let's pop it down. It's a lot of happiness. Like I said, it does cause a little bit of noise pollution. But that is not the end of the world. We'll look at building some more of those shortly. I uh, just wanted to check over here because I had noticed there was a little bit of crime. The crime rate over here is actually very high. Um, how are our police departments doing? Do we have a police station over here? I can't actually see one. It might be time to put one in. So let's go ahead and put in a police station. That'll happy people up a little bit and deal with a lot of the crime. So that's all good. So let's have a look at some of those other buildings. Now we are losing a little bit of population. Not too sure why that is. We're not losing many though, so I'm not terribly concerned about it at the moment. So we've built the Fountain of Life and Death. Uh, and that is the requirement towards the fusion power plant. What else do we possibly have? Um... That's the requirement for building the Eden Project. I wonder if that's the Eden Project as in the Eden Project that's in Cornwall in the UK. That'd be quite interesting if it is. Um, that's for building the Space Elevator. Medical Centre. Uh, the Hadron Collider. Maybe there's one from each category. Uh, required for building the Eden Project. Space Elevator. Medical Centre. Hadron Collider. Fusion power plant. So this is the Plaza of the Dead and we need to fill three cemeteries in order to unlock that. So we definitely don't want to be going out of our way to... Um, we definitely don't want to be going out of our way to build crematoriums at the moment. We can. We have the option to build crematoriums, but we'd like to be able to build that. What else could we build? We could build the stadium... Uh, that's towards building the space elevator. That's towards building the medical center. It's the high interest tower. And um, that cost would cost quite a bit of money. And it's got quite a bit of upkeep as well. We're going to be leaving that for the time being. But at least we now know what those things do and how they work. Looks like we've got an empty building or two. We've also got a fire. Um... That's the park that we just built. The Fountain of Life and Death was actually on fire. I mean, first of all, how do you set a fountain on fire? And that is just strange. So we are making, well, we are gaining some population very slowly. We really need to come up with a solution to this roundabout now because it is just becoming absolutely stuck. And I think it's because there's a lot of traffic trying to get off here to get into the city. So... We need to come up with a solution for that. And I think what we're going to attempt to do, and we'll just quickly pause. This may not solve the problem. I may just make matters ten times worse. Is we're going to build a slip road. We are going to raise the level of the road up. If it will let me. Uh, we want to be building straight roads, of course. Yeah, now. But we don't want it to go that high. It's just because I was trying to build co curved roads and it wasn't allowing me to do it. We want to try and cross over the motorway if we can which it will let us and we want to try and bring it down and connect on to maybe in this direction uh, can we go up one it's very strange that it won't let them cross over there so like you can't have one raised road crossed over another which is a very very strange thing indeed 
And we could potentially... This is why I'm doing this paused, because if I need to change anything... So, yeah, we can actually do that. Now, the question is, can we come down at a steep enough angle to be able to reach up and connect to that road? Apparently, we can. So, let's go ahead and do that and unpause. That's a very, very um, high road... Perhaps it doesn't need to be that high. Perhaps we could have lowered it a little bit. We're, we'll actually see if it works. We're just trying to make sure we've got room. Right, there are a few cars using that slip road now. And hopefully they'll just use it to bypass some of the traffic on this roundabout. Doesn't look like they are. I see we're still getting emergency service vehicles stuck on these roads. They don't always necessarily appear to be using the most sensible of pathing solutions. And again, we've got a similar issue going on here. Where is this traffic going? Is it turning left or is it just going all the way around the roundabout? Because if it's turning left, maybe we need to just avoid the roundabout completely and just try and bring some of this traffic... Um, well, we already are. We've, we've already given the traffic the option to come straight off here but they're actually choosing to go this way around where it's busier so yeah i think there's a certain point where the ai is going to work against you and no matter how efficiently you try and plan your roads out to give traffic the option of uh, avoiding the congestion it's still not going to go quite in the right direction so we want to try and get three cemeteries full. It's actually going to take quite a while, though if we don't empty any of them out, they should fill up relatively easily. Of course, you could just say, well, have less cemeteries, but the problem with less cemeteries is that you then end up with um, less hearses, and less hearses means you're going to have bodies piling up. Still an awful lot of people using the... Um using the metro uh, there is a free camera option available in this game by the way you can actually turn off the uh, interface completely and you can um, basically move the camera around pretty much wherever you want it to go so it's really really good that, this is the highest zoom level i can't zoom in any further than i currently am uh, what you can do if you're actually quick enough to uh, click on a person i'm just going to pause here i won't let me do it because i'm in free camera mode actually but if we turn off the free camera we can literally go ahead and click on any person, and each of these uh, people has a name, and it tells you where they live. You can go and find their house just by clicking on them, uh, which is a you know a really really interesting thing that you can do. Um, let's just go back and find an actual uh, person. Doesn't matter where and anyone anywhere. Let's just zoom out. Where were we? Uh, over near the uh, metro station somewhere so if we go here we can click on any person we want to uh, same person again and we just click on follow and uh, unpause the game and we can actually see that she's uh, currently unemployed and she's going home she's uh, in the metro station so she's currently sat on the metro and she's traveling all the way over to another metro station there she goes she's out of the metro station and she is probably heading home. Yep, she's actually going home. And the uh, the AI doesn't always take the shortest route. Actually, looks like she's got a pet dog there as well. The, the AI doesn't always take the shortest route. Sometimes it will take the most efficient route, trying to avoid sort of congestion. Sometimes using public transport and things like that. So I do actually quite like that. It's uh, it's a nice little feature. Um, some of the we're still following. Some of these buildings look really really good as well. Once you actually get down onto the level and uh, sort of zoom into the city, I know I haven't done all this much, but if you really do get low down to the road. Uh, you really do see some... Uh, let's just go on to speed once so everything looks a little more normal. But the game really does look pretty. And that's one of the things that surprised me. Because this game is made in the Unity engine. And don't get me wrong, the Unity engine is capable of doing some amazing stuff. But, I mean, just look at that. The quality uh, and uh, the, the vista that you can get from this game is absolutely wonderful. I love it to pieces. Um, what else have we got going on over here? Still got this horrible, murky, muddy um, industry area. Uh, but generally things aren't going too bad. The population's still kind of hovering up and down. We may need to get some more residential uh, areas in. Although we've actually got a bigger demand for industry at the moment. Strange considering we were having so much of our industry closed down because we didn't have enough workers. But we'll sort that out in another video. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope you are still enjoying City Skylines. And I'll see you next time. Until then... Goodbye for now.